Protocol Labs is an innovation network that starts, supports, and grows breakthrough computing projects at the foundations of the internet. These projects power a thriving network of companies and teams across the PL network, working on everything from decentralized storage to private offline collaboration to Web3 content creator networks. We'll hear deep dives on IPFS and Filecoin in a minute, but first I want to highlight three other projects at the foundations of Web3 innovation and development. LibP2P is the modular networking stack of Web3, used by many blockchain networks and peer-to-peer -peer applications for content discovery and routing. This year, LibP2P powered networks have grown massively. LibP2P is now powering over 300,000 IPFS nodes, 4.6 thousand Filecoin storage providers, 5,500 Ethereum 2 consensus clients, powering over 450,000 validators, and 112,000 parachain nodes across the Polkadot ecosystem. TestGround provides large-scale interop and regression testing for peer-to-peer -peer networks. It has been critical for debugging and improving the IPFS Kademlia DHT implementation through 100,000 node simulations, and it now runs automatic integration and regression tests on each new PR in Rust and Go libp2p. Support for automated browser testing with JS libp2p is coming soon, thanks to Little Bear Labs. Finally, DRAND is the distributed randomness service that powers Filecoin with verifiable, unpredictable random numbers. The DRAND network is run by the League of Entropy, a community of over 15 organizations that collectively provide an unbiasable source of public randomness with no single point of failure. This year has seen amazing new adoption and growth. CryptoSat is working to bring DRAND nodes to space, making this unbiasable randomness service truly out of this world. DRAND is also unlocking new capabilities like time lock encryption, which allows encrypting secret messages to be revealed at a specific future moment in time. You can also harness DRAND randomness on Polygon, Moonbeam, Arbitrum, Phantom, Solana, and many more, thanks to DIA and Noise. These are just a few of the many projects being built in the Protocol Labs network. Stay tuned for more updates throughout Lab Week on their awesome progress and adoption. Now, we'll hear more about IPFS and Filecoin. Hello. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure and an honor to talk to you with Mosh about IPFS today. IPFS is the content distribution layer for Web3 and the future of the web platform. Uh, with a storied history of serving critical use cases and seeing continuous adoption over the last seven years, today, IPFS is solving problems the way that no other protocol can, from live video to private messaging to, let's be honest, serving almost all of the NFTs. The IPFS network has peaked at over half a million nodes, and the IPFS gateway is serving over a billion requests per week sometimes. A billion. Can I get a huge round of applause for the teams that made that happen? And while we've got a ways to go, this table is getting slowly more green over time. This is progress we couldn't have imagined three years ago at IPFS camp where a bunch of us got together and it was a huge turning point for the project where we met a bunch of new builders, learned about a bunch of new use cases and made a bunch of new friends. Mosh. All right, so a funny word has started popping up in IPFS this year, Kubo. What is Kubo? Well, for a really long time, IPFS had a single reference implementation called GoIPFS. And it turns out when you use that naming format, you crowd out, out other possibilities. So we renamed it. First, we made a placeholder PR called Banana, renaming IPFS to Banana, um, just to identify all the places that that name would have to change. And then we landed on the name Kubo, which, you know, it references Cube. It's got a, a lot of interesting possibilities there. And really excited for Go IPFS to transition into Kubo because this is part of a bigger movement. So a year ago, IPFS had you know, about two implementations, Go IPFS, JS IPFS. Today, I'd call it much closer to eight, just in a year. 
And these new implementations are being written by new teams outside of protocol labs for new environments like mobile, where you, you, you want to conserve battery power more than you want to rebroadcast the DHT all the time, maybe, or um, highly scalable cloud environments. And so this is a real Cambrian explosion in what it means to be an IPFS implementation. And it's going to give users and builders a lot more options in languages, runtimes, different uh, software architectures, and lots more. So we have a big announcement on this topic coming Friday at IPFS camp. If you want to learn more, be there. And this all culminated in an implementer summit in July called IPFS Thing. It's a real turning point for this phase transition of the IPFS project to many implementations. Uh, the videos are fantastic. You can catch them on YouTube. And I think the best thing was reminding us um, how powerful it is and how magical to gather a community of builders who are solving the same problems together, exploring new possibilities. And so we're going to do it again at the end of this week, bigger and better. This Friday through Sunday, we'll be back right here at this incredible venue for the second ever IPFS camp. It's a gathering for the whole IPFS community, devs, operators, implementers, researchers, users, curious people, and you. So we need to take that GIF again, uh, but with way more people. So grab a ticket and see you there. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am absolutely delighted to stand in front of you today and present just a few of the impacts of the Filecoin project, specifically how the community is helping Web3 cross the chasm into mass adoption. So as many of you in the room know, Filecoin is a crypto-powered storage network whose mission is to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. Simply put, today, Filecoin is the scalable data storage layer of Web3. If you aggregate all the Web3 storage protocols that are out there, Filecoin is 99% of the storage capacity, 95% of the storage utilization, and the platform of choice for developers all across Web3. But that falls well short of the ambitions of the Filecoin community for the project. We're all here to accelerate the transition from Web 2 to Web 3 and onboard billions of people onto Web 3 infrastructure, really instilling trust in internet interactions. And the only way to do that is to have Web 3 storage and compute meet the scale requirements for Web 3 and be able to onboard and handle web scale type applications. Think like YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, etc. And so while today Filecoin is the data storage layer of Web3, we have a master plan to make it the data storage layer of the entire web at large. And that master plan falls in three steps. Step one, build the world's largest decentralized storage network by deploying hardware all over the world. Step two, onboard and safeguard humanity's data, as much useful data as possible. And step three, bring compute to the data to enable web scale type applications that can accelerate the transition from web two to web three. So I'll step through just a few of these today. In step one, we have largely achieved this. Uh, throughout the Filecoin network, there are 4,000 storage providers in 44 countries providing 17 exabytes of storage capacity. I mean, give yourselves a round of applause. This is an unbelievable achievement. It took AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure six years in the early days of the crowd to achieve what Filecoin has achieved in its first year alone. And this is now bigger than many centralized storage co companies that are public on the markets today. While you know, we've been in a bear market in 2002, network power continues to grow. It's grown 37% in 2002, with North America exhibiting the fastest growth at 89% this year. Um, with you know, other countries like Korea and Singapore and Hong Kong that, uh, that are following short after. And we now have top tier hardware vendors like Seagate, AMD, and Supermicro leading in with reference architectures and leasing programs. And we're starting to stand up accelerator programs all over the world um, to really teach the next realm of Filecoin storage operators to join the network. So that's step one, build the largest decentralized storage network. Step two is to onboard and safeguard humanity's data. And we've made a tremendous amount of progress this year. 
This year, there's almost 260 petabytes of live data across 10 million active deals on the Filecoin network. That means we're onboarding storage at two to three petabytes per day, which really makes this the largest decentralized storage network by far, and again, larger than some of the centralized providers uh, that exist today. The amount of data onboarded in 2002 so far this year has 8.5x. That is a tremendous amount of growth. We're still seeing 25% growth every month on data, and that's coming from 1,000 unique clients that have uploaded data to the platform. These are aggregators or kind of major data sets and major clients. Now, we're doing this with two major incentive systems. One is Filecoin Plus, which is an underlying economic structure that makes it incredibly cheap to store data on the Filecoin network. And two is large-scale data onboarding platforms that really target specific user segments. One example, as an example of that, is the Web3.storage and NFT.storage platforms, which together aggregate 80,000 users storing 140 million uploads since April of 2001, growing at 30% month over month. So this is just one client of the Filecoin network, but it aggregates a whole bunch of users beneath the surface. There are hundreds of large data sets so stored on Filecoin, and this includes massive scale data science and public government data sets. Examples include the, uh, the neutrino data sets from UC Berkeley and the New York City public open government data that's being stored on Filecoin today. And of course, there are over 500 startups that are building on the IPFS, Filecoin, and PLN ecosystems, and it's becoming the default developer choice for developer tooling and storage on the decentralized web. Finally, step three, bring compute to the data to enable web scale type applications. And this falls in three major initiatives that were focused on in 2003. First is the launch of FVM, user smart contracts and programmability on Filecoin, which is a huge deal. FVM is compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine and will, will basically help a whole bunch of new use cases come to Filecoin today, including things like perpetual storage, auto-renewing deals, a multi-billion dollar DeFi economy, and much, much more. Testnet is actually live today, and this goes live on mainnet in Q1, so we're super excited about FVM. Two is large-scale computation over Filecoin data. This, you can almost think of this you know, having a many L2 type compute networks that join the Filecoin layer one. And what this really enables us to do is enable massive web two style applications to finally make the transition of web three, especially ones that require like a tremendous amount of processing of data under the hood. Think like Twitter or Twitch or YouTube. And finally, we need to scale the blockchain in general. Um, hierarchical consensus is a major consensus breakthrough that's coming in 2023, and that really enables us to move from hundreds of transactions to, per second to billions or even trillions of transactions per second over time. So this will enable a huge level up in the scaling of the blockchain itself, enable massive scale data science and web scale web applications on the Filecoin network. So that is the Filecoin master plan onboard, build the world's largest decentralized storage network, onboard and safeguard humanity's data, and bring compute to the data to enable web scale applications. Today, Filecoin is the scalable data storage layer of Web3, but together as a community, we're making it the scalable data storage layer of the web at large. Thank you very much.